Hey gang, welcome back to Saturday Sportster. Today we're going to get our new carburetor installed on the motorcycle with our new air cleaner. Now this bike did come with a carburetor, I wasn't fond of it, so we got rid of it. Picked up this uh, brand new, genuine Harley Davidson CB carburetor. Saturday Sportster. Woo! Let's get going here. All right, one of the things I want to show y'all is how to gain access to the air fuel mixture screw. And what Harley's done, this is the back side of the carburetor when it's on the bike, on the manifold. This is the air cleaner side. On the back side of the carburetor, you see this tower. And, oh look, there's a little plug in it. Hmm, Harley put a plug in here because they didn't want you to mess with your air fuel mixture screw. I don't know why they did that. So we're simply going to drill a hole in this plug and then we're gonna use a little sheet metal screw and a pair of pliers and we're gonna wiggle it back and forth and pull the plug out and then we'll look inside there and you'll see the air fuel mixture screw. If your carburetor still has that plug and like it, if you don't know the history on your motorcycle and you have this style carburetor, you might want to check that and readjust it. Because when I worked at the shop, I was finding the screw underneath here set at all different places. A turnout, a half a turnout. All, it, it was, there was no rhyme or reason to it. I don't know how the darn thing could run. And the other thing uh, is the carbs are set up very lean from the factory in order to pass EPA emissions testing. So we're going to show you how to do that. And then after that, we'll pull the bowl off. We'll show you where the pilot jet and the main jet are. Uh, anytime you're doing a high flow air cleaner, a freer flowing exhaust system, you should be increasing the pilot jet size and readjusting your air fuel mixture. A lot of times on the Sportster, it's not really necessary to change the main jet. And we'll touch on that after we get inside here and take a look. So before we take the bowl off, we'll go ahead and drill this out and uh, get to that air fuel mixture screw. All right, so you wanna get your hole drilled in there and you wanna be careful when it gets through there that you don't bang right into the main, or the, the, the adjuster. And as you can plainly see, I wandered way off center. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I, did, I sh could have center punched it. It's not critical, we're just removing it anyway. Okay, let's hope for the best here because boy, I got that really off center. So we're gonna put our screw into the plug like so and then we're going to grab a pair of pliers and there she is look at her see it really didn't matter that i was off center and i didn't damage anything and now that we've got our little i call it a welsh plug out let's get these chips off of here. So now that you can see with the little plug removed, there's your air fuel mixture screw. Now it is possible when when this is on the bike, you're going to you're going to want to adjust this. We can we're going to do a preliminary adjustment on it before we put the carb on the bike, but there she is. And I have another screwdriver. I can't seem to find it here today, but it's a stubby uh, craftsman, cheap craftsman, and basically it was a, a wide, like number two or so, uh, flat. And what I did was I just took it to the grinder and I ground it down because you're kind of going from here and there's not enough room for a long screwdriver for the workbench. This one's fine. So just for the heck of it, let's uh, see where the factory set this one. So it hasn't been turned. And what you're going to do when you're 
uh, adjusting this is, is, you can see it's a flat, so you're gonna count the flats and you're gonna go one half, you know, you're gonna turn it and that's one half, one whole, uh, counting the flats. So let's just see where the factory set this one, just for the heck of it. So I'm gonna turn it in till it seats. One half, one whole, one and a half, she was, this one was actually set pretty well. Um, so, and when you do, when you're doing your initial setting on this, you're going to run it until it seats and be careful when it seats. You don't want to cram it down because you may damage the end of it. That, and the, once again, this is your air fuel mixture screw. So you don't want to damage it. So you're going to run it down until it seats. And then for initial setting, I'm going to do, let's do two turns out from seated. So right now it's seated. So I'm going to, once again, I'm going to count my flats. One half, one whole, one half, one whole. So now the air fuel mixture screw is two turns out from seated. Okay. Now that we've got that little job done, we'll go ahead and uh, take our float bowl off and show you where your pilot jet's located and where your main jet's located. And we're also going to be uh, enlarging the pilot jet because we have free flowing exhaust, free flowing air cleaner. Heck, we got cams in this baby. Always use a good high quality screwdriver on these Phillips screws on the float ball on these. They do strip out very easily uh, if they've been on and off once and if the carbs been on the bike for a really long time uh, there's a chance they're corroded and they could they get they just get stripped easy and there again this is this job can be performed on the bike you can remove the float bowl with the carburetor on the bike we're just going to do all this stuff on the workbench because it's easier Okay, so we've removed all four float bowl screws. And then when you're taking it off, you've got, this is your accelerator pump here. You'll see that little rod. Oh, and she just fell off, but that's okay. We'll get her put back on and not a big deal. Okay, uh, one other thing I'd like to mention this is your accelerator pump nozzle. So it, as you work your throttle, the rod that's connected to the linkage there, it goes down in the hole and there's a little diaphragm in the bottom here and it pushes on that and it sprays gas out here. Uh, one of the things you can check for if you are planning on taking your carb off the bike to tune it in and look at it and check things, uh, Obviously, this is a new carburetor, so there's no gas in it. Um, but before you take the carburetor off the bike, you can just take your air cleaner off and look down the hole and work the throttle and see just to verify that this nozzle, there's a tiny little hole in it right there, is spraying into the center of the bore. Because I've seen these before where it's spraying off to the side. Not good. You can heat this up a little and turn it in here to make it spray directly in the center. Once you get your bowl off, there's your main jet right there. Uh, all main jets will have a size stamped on them, engraved however they do it. Uh, but it looks like we have a 190. Depending on what model Sportster you have, you may say, see anywhere from a 175 to 185. So it could be 175, 180, 185 for the Sportster models, uh, depending on what year and if it's an 883 or 1200. Uh, because it's a 190, I know we souped up this engine. I think I'm gonna drop it down one to 185, and then if we need to, we can go up one. And the other thing you gotta realize about the main jet is, you know, a lot of times people, their bikes aren't running right, and they immediately go, I need a new main jet. Well, you gotta realize, that the main jet doesn't really even come into play until you're well, until at three quarters of a throttle or above. 
So if you're having a mid-range runnability issue, the main jet has nothing to do with it. It's the intermediate jet and the pilot jet air fuel mixture. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pop this out of here. Uh, use a screwdriver that fits in the slot of the jet nicely. Oh, and look, the, uh, we'll show you here, but the, the emulsion tube came out with the main jet. It's not a problem. There's a hex on it. Uh, we can either put it back in the carb and snug it down and try again, or since it's already out and it came out like that, we'll just throw a little wrench on the hex on the tube, and then we'll use our screwdriver. And there comes the main jet. And here's what the main jet will look like when removed. And once again, your emulsion tube. So we can go ahead and put that back in there because we really didn't need to disturb that. It just happened to come out. Anytime working on stuff like this, just snug it up. You don't have to crank it down hard. It's not going to fall out. And then I've got a variety of different jets here. Some of them are used, that's not a problem. I don't have a new 185, so we'll go ahead and we'll put this used one in there. Hole on these is very large. It's not like a pilot jet has a small hole. Once again, snug it up. No reason to crank it down. Now, if you look down inside that recess, you're going to see the pilot jet. Our uh, CB carburetor decided to put it way down in there. Once again, that's why you have to have a very thin screwdriver. And when you put your screwdriver in the hole, make darn sure it's in the slot. And then you'll feel when it breaks because they like to put them in there nice and tight at the factory. There she is. There's our pilot jet. Pilot jet will also have the size on it. Let's have a look here. Uh, let me get my uh, cheater here because even with my glasses on, uh, we have a 45 pilot jet. Pilot jets generally going to see 40, 42, 45, 48. Well, since I want to open this up, let's see what I have to choose from here. That's a 42. That's a 42. What I used to do at the shop is I had this little drill index of very small incremental drill bits. So I've pretty much figured out what's going to bump this up to the next size without actually running off to the Harley shop or wherever, ordering one online. I've got it already set up in my drill handle and basically I'm just going to run it through there. One time, I've just enlarged this. Anytime you do that, and incidentally, you don't want to just grab any old drill bit and randomly make it bigger. You have, it is an exact science, it's not just Oh, here's a tiny drill bit in my toolbox. Let me bump it up with that. That won't work. So we bumped it up one, then we're going to go ahead and reinstall it. Once again, you can do this job on the motorcycle. That's why I have my little stubby. Okay, there's the main jet checked, changed it, went down a size so we can go up a size if we need to after we get the engine running and check things out. That's about all we're gonna do inside here. So basically we've bumped that up, we've increased that one size, and we've readjusted the air fuel mixture. We're done inside here. We're gonna put our uh, accelerator pump rod back on the arm. There's just a little hole right there where it goes. If it falls off, it's pretty simple. No mystery there. You're gonna just slide it in that little plastic chinga, like so. And then when you're putting your bowl back on, you're gonna make sure that that goes in here. Check your gasket, make sure it's all good. Generally, you can take these bowls off and put them on several times before the gasket gets destroyed because there's a little groove that it's in and you can see the factory puts a little bit of glue or something in there to keep it in place while they're assembling things. And 
At this point in time, I'll show you another neat little product we make here at Lowbrow Customs. This is a extended float bowl screws. So if you do find that your factory screws stripped, boogered up, been on there a long time, or if you're like me and you're not 100% on your jetting, you may need to change them one more time or at a later date. This makes it much easier to remove when it's on the machine. Uh, you're not trying to get to the two back screws with your screwdriver and hoping that they're not boogered up. And then if one does strip out, then you're gonna be pulling the carb off anyway. So once again, And you may have noticed I didn't mention the float. You don't want to mess with the floats on these carburetors unless absolutely necessary. And I'll tell you why. The little pin that holds the float, there's two towers sticking down in there, pin. It's not like some of the carburetors you may have worked on in the past where the pin just slides right out and the float comes right out. This one, you have to drive it out with the tiniest of punches and it's easy to break things. So don't mess with the float unless you absolutely have to. Okay, there's those. Once again, this is a alloy body on this carburetor. No need to tighten it till you pull the threads out. And if for any reason your accelerator pump quits working, you can take these three screws out and there's a rubber diaphragm in there and you can replace that pretty easily. And there we go. Oh, look it. I screwed up. Gosh darn. I put the long one, should be a long one on the back, short one on the front. My bad. Hey, no big deal. We'll switch it around. It's got too short and too long. So obviously you want to put the put them in so that they're all the same. Okay, one other thing I want to tell you about. If you have an earlier carburetor and you are removing it from the motorcycle and you plan on removing the fuel line from this fitting where the inlet, this is your fuel inlet, and you have a plastic one of these, Harley just loves these silly clamps that aren't screw clamps. They're pinched. You want to remove that completely by cutting through it, prying this up, pulling it off before you try taking it off. Uh, the fitting on here, if, if yours is plastic, they're easily broken. And then you'll be ordering up the brass one and removing the plastic one to change it out. So just be aware of that if you are removing a fuel line from this fitting and, and you can replace this with a standard worm drive clamp. Harley just likes these silly ones for some reason or another are beyond me why they use those darn things. Okay, that's that. Let's talk about throttles and throttle cables real quick. I'm gonna use this throttle on our project. Lowbrow Customs, we make these available in different finishes. We got black, I'm gonna use the black one. We got brass, we got aluminum. We got single cable, dual cable. Early bikes had a single cable, later bikes had a push pull. This bike does have a spot for two cables, push pull. Uh, one thing I am gonna deviate from the program because I prefer these is I'm going to use threaded cables. See how the end is threaded? In 1996, they went to a push fit cable. It looks like this. It's got an end with a little tiny C-clip. Here, we'll just open this up real quick so you can get a look at that. And I actually prefer the threaded ones. You can see that one just pushes into the switch housing for the throttle. And you see that little clip there? These can be difficult to remove. These are not. You just put a wrench on it, unthread it. 
So pay attention if you're ordering new cables for your bike, if you're older, 95 and below, threaded, 96 and up, push fit. It's not a problem to mix and match. Cables will work. Cable for CV. These are for CV carburetor. Now these will work. If it's obviously a key in a butterfly style carburetor, then no, the cable's not going to work for a threaded. Now the size of the threads on here are going to be quarter and five sixteenths. If you're going to do a single cable throttle, like some people like to do, a lot of the guys with the SNS do it. Uh, they do have a very strong return spring. This one also does. Uh, I'm going to be using the stock system. And the reason why is because if for some odd reason your throttle got stuck open, you wouldn't really have any way to close it if you didn't have the two cable system. Uh, we do have these available in a single cable, if that's what you want to do. Incidentally, the single cable will be 5 16 These are also called a throttle and an idle cable. Basically, one opens it and one closes it. The 5 16 will be the throttle cable, and you can see the difference here in a second. The, this ends the same, but the other end, and this will be referred to as the idle cable. Why they call it that, I don't know, but at any rate, it's got a little spring thing on it, and you'll see when we attach it to the carburetor how that works. And any of our, any Harley cable has this little end that goes on to this for attaching it to the throttle tube. So basically this allows you to put this through the hole and thread it in. If it had this on there, it wouldn't fit through the hole. So and all of our new cables are gonna come with new ends. Once again, we're gonna do this off the bike. It's not a problem to go ahead and put all this together and have the cables just hanging and walk over to the bike with one in one hand, the other in the other, pop it on, slide it on the bar, tighten everything up. Uh, you can do these jobs with the, with the carb on the bike. It is kind of a pain. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and show you on the bench. It'll be easier for demonstration purposes also to show you how everything connects and how it works. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hook the cables onto the carburetor and then we'll go ahead and install our, our new grip on our throttle tube. We'll put them through here and we'll attach them there because that's how you would do it on the machine. Once again, one cable pulls, one cable pushes. The one without the spring is doing the pulling. So if you look at your carburetor, you can see that this this hole here is going to get this one. So you're just gonna pull it all the way one way, put it in the hole. You can turn this to make it easier. And then you're just gonna put that in there like that. And that's that one. Then you can pull it on the other end and take up the slack. And you'll see how this is all the way seated in there. And then we'll go ahead and put the other one. And this, see, see why I put that one on first, because now it's easier to get to that one. Same program, make sure your spring is up there like that before you put it in the slot. And then you're just gonna do the same thing here. You're gonna put that in the slot on the carburetor and then take up your slack. We offer uh, several different throttle tubes on the website, uh, several versions styles, materials. So uh, I'm just gonna use the inexpensive plastic black one. They're like right around five bucks. Works for me. And this is going to be dual cable style. We also have them for single. We have them uh, metal if you prefer metal. I think these ones work just fine. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put our throttle side grip on here. And I don't care what you say, I like using this. Once it dries up, it's not coming off of there. Little brow grips are a nice tight fit.
There we go. Oh, and we got a bunch of lube on there too. That's as a bonus. Okay. Go ahead and take this apart. One of the really neat things about the lowbrow throttle is, unlike some other brands out there, you'll see when we put this on the bar, we're gonna close that gap. We're not gonna have an unsightly gap on the throttle. Okay. Uh, I, I, I don't think I mentioned on the push fit ones, they're also two different sizes. There's just a larger and smaller, so it's kind of hard to screw that up. We'll go ahead and move that over there. So we know that the quarter inch one is gonna go in this hole. Because it can't fit in the other one. Just go ahead and uh, get that started. Not, not to be worried about tightening that just yet. And we'll go ahead and get the other one in there. And it's okay that our cable's all weird now. We'll pull it out back out in just a second here. You can see that it, it's okay, it's not a problem. And there she comes out of there. That one's not cooperating very well. That one's fine. I guess sometimes things are sometimes easier to do it on the bike, sometimes not. There we go. Okay. Now you'll see I have my adjusters turned pretty far down there. So now we can go ahead and put our throttle and grip on here. It's gonna go on this way and we need our little ends I guess what we'll do is we'll just push it this way and then we'll use the adjuster to pull it that goes in there like that oh boy Okay, we'll get it. Okay, go ahead and put our lid on. That'll keep everything in place. Put our two screws in. And I am tightening these down, but not, I'm probably loosening them back up when we get over to the bike to put this on. Okay, come on. Seems to be the problem here. There she goes. So if you tighten these all the way down on the workbench, then this isn't gonna slide over the handlebar. Okay, now we need to take up the slack. You can see you got some slack there. Oh, there it goes. Got a little bit more to go. And 
and I think we'll do the uh, final cable adjustment once we got it on the bike. It'll be a little easier than trying to do this on the workbench. So there we go. Throttle cables, throttle grip, ready to go on. This carburetor did not come with a choke, so I managed to pilfer one off another carb we had hanging around here, and I just changed this, got, took the end out of the carb because it was nice and clean where the other one was dirty. And we're also going to be using this fine little part here made by the gas box here in Cleveland, Ohio. This is a choke mount. You'll see in a second here. We're going to take two screws out of the lid. We're going to put this on there, we're, and then you're going to choke. It's going to be right on the top of the carburetor. Woo, it's going to be awesome. Okay, pretty simple. Stick it in the hole, thread it in. No big mystery going on here with your choke. Just make sure that your threads are starting evenly. It's kind of a, sometimes if you turn the whole cable, it works better. And you really do have to do this with the carb off the bike. So if you ever, see how that started real easy? Well, any minute now it's gonna, oh, look at that. It worked perfectly, great, awesome. The carb I just stole this off of didn't come off that easily. And then snug it up. This will allow it to rotate to where it needs to be, but we are going to be looping it like so for, because this is where it's gonna end up, like that. So we'll go ahead and take these two screws out. And there's new screws in the package. if you so desire to use them. There's four of them. This bracket is gonna get mounted to the top of the carburetor, like that. But we're gonna to have to put the cable in here first, and that's why this bracket's kinda of unique, because you don't have to take the cable apart and take it off the bike to get it in here. You're just gonna put it in here now, like so. And then you must use the new screws because the old ones won't fit through. Actually, they'll fit through the holes on here, but they're not long enough. And that's what it will look like. Once again, common sense tells us we don't need to crank these down until it rips the threads out of the carburetor. We just need them to be tight. And I think I'm perfectly fine with the other screws in there. Okay. And then we're going to tighten this up. and check the operation of the cable. If your cable just, here, watch what happens when I loosen this. It doesn't want to stay up. So you want to tighten this. Don't over tighten it, because she's a plastic. She'll break. And that's pretty good right there. One last time. There's our choke working. I think we are ready to put our carb on the motorcycle along with our throttle. Let's do that. Let's move on over to the motorcycle, gang. We're ready to put the carburetor and the throttle control on the handlebar, but before we put the throttle on, we better put our other LC Fab Delete thing on here because it doesn't split in half. And then we just have to take the throttle back off again. So this is gonna uh, match the other side for when we do get the brake on there. So for now, we're just gonna slide it over the bar and kind of let it hang out. Uh, let's put it on the right way around. I do believe it's gonna go that way. 
we're just going to put it up right about here so it's out of the way and just barely snug this down so it doesn't mark the bar and move around. So that'll get moved later for the break. So we're going to take our rag out of there because she won't run with that. And we have a new gasket on here. Anytime you take your carb off, you should always check to make sure this is nice and pliable and that it's still in good shape because that is what seals your carburetor to the engine. And I've, if I've said this once, I've said it a million times. Spigot mount. That means this just plugs into that. Okay. Then you kind of want to eyeball it and see that it's orientated correctly. And that looks pretty good right there. I think we're probably going to have to get our uh, fuel line on there before we put our air cleaner on and uh, we can go ahead and put this up here now check our operation of our throttle I think I did pretty good on the uh, length of the throttle cables those look pretty good here's a real common mistake that people make when when putting grips or throttles on their bike or even moving their controls or changing bars. If, when I just slid this home, I can plainly feel that the end of this rubber is hitting the bar, see? And what will happen is you'll tighten it down and then you'll go to try to get your throttle to snap back and it won't snap back real good. And you're like, oh, adjusting your cables. And you're like, why isn't this working right? The reason why is because the end of that rubber is hitting the end of the bar. So what you want to do is once you get it all the way on, you're just going to move it back ever so slightly. Just a little bit. Now the rubber's not hitting. Tighten those up evenly. And we're not super concerned about exactly where things are going right now because we may need to loosen this up later and, and rotate it back or backwards or forwards to get everything just right once we get our tank. and the rest of our stuff on here, but we are going to snug it up to adjust the cables. And would you look at that beautiful gap you get out of that lowbrow custom throttle? Look at that. Real nice. It's not some giant gaping cavern. Okay. Oh, it looks like I got my cables just a little bit too tight because I don't feel any free play there. So we'll turn these down a little bit. See that right there? That's about right. You need a little bit of free play. You don't want it bowstring tight. Rut row. It looks like our carburetor needs to come this way a little bit. And there we go. See, if your carb's not straight on there, that arm is running into the cylinder head. It should snap back like that perfectly. Now, any other time, if you're doing throttle, cables, replacing anything that has anything to do with this mechanism. When you get done adjusting these, you don't want to have it on the lift like this and go, oh, that snaps back. Perfect. Tighten everything up and go for a ride. What you want to do is when you get to take the bike off the lift, you want to turn the handlebars full lock all the way this way. Check it. Full lock all the way this way. Check it. And then straight. It should snap back like that in all three positions. If it does not, you could have something binding up when you go around a corner or something and it's just not safe. So always make sure that your throttle snaps back in all three positions. And uh, that's pretty much it for that part of the program. There's our nifty little choke. Nice and handy right there next to the carburetor. Uh, let's figure out what we want to do next. Hmm. Wonder what we have in this little satchel here. Ah, w and W. Oh, I know what this is. Look at her. Skid plate, baby. Hey. Any bike that has tires looking like that should probably have one of these on it, don't you think? Oh. No instructions. 
Oh my goodness. They will figure it out. It looks to me like, oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, looks like we got a little hunk of aluminum here with a bolt on it. I'm guessing that probably goes on the front. And I'm guessing this back probably just slides into something underneath there. So let's see if we can get this done real quick. Probably a good idea to put this on before we uh, do our exhaust. All right, might help if we put our glasses on to see where this is gonna go under here. Aha! Look at that. Ah, oh, hey, would you look at that? Goes right, oh, I'll bet you that goes to that hole right there. I'm guessing. And they gave us a nice piece of aluminum and a bolt and a nylock. Oh, it looks like that probably goes in between here because it's not going all the way up there very easily. So let's try it like this and see what happens. I'm thinking that's probably how that's going to work. Not quite sure how I'm going to get my hand in there. I think we might want to take this fuel uh, oil filter off of here, gang. That'll make it a lot easier. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, pop this filter off of here. I think it's going to be a lot easier. Oh, boy. To get in there. What kind of crazy filter is this? There we go. There she comes. Give me my wrench back. There she goes. Oh yeah. Hey, we need an oil change anyway. All right, we got us a flat washer. And we got a lot nylock on here because we don't want the engine skid plate coming off down the road because that wouldn't be cool. And I think we're going to need another ratchet with a socket. We're going to have dueling ratchets. Okay. Well, that was a fine job done in no time at flat. Would you look at that fine part there? That'll protect our belly from rocks and gravel and such. Thanks, W&W &W in Germany.